Yeah, just send the reports to John and I'll follow up on the case tomorrow morning. Stop! Please! I need backup now! Hey kiddo, your father and I finally got our wills done. Mom? We want you and Emily to get your wills done too. Mom, now's not really a good time. Can I call you back? The Alliance has top Christian professionals who can help you for free. If you're a mom, you encourage your kids. It's how God made you. If you're a Christian, you want to be a good steward of all the Lord has entrusted to you. It's how God made you. If you're part of the Alliance family and need help writing your will in a way that reflects your faith, please contact Orchard Alliance today. Are you at the gym? You sound out of breath. Listen to your mother. You never know when the Lord will call you home. You need to get your will done. Wait, you haven't done your will yet? All kidding aside, it's important for Christians to have a will that reflects their faith, protects their families, and pleases the Lord. Our team of estate design consultants are available to serve Alliance families and individuals without cost or obligation. Most people can be easily helped over the phone. I hope you'll give us an opportunity to bless you through our will and trust planning ministry. To schedule a phone appointment with one of our team, please visit us at orchardalliance.org forward slash steward. Thank you. Es-tu à racheter pour Dieu par ton sang des hommes de toute tribu, de toute langue, de tout peuple et de toutes les nations? From the beginning to now, our destiny is to follow the Lord. We have never been able to do it. Every one, our people, our language, our culture. I am going to cry out to you day out of here. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. We are going to be able to do it. Dando la bienvenida a familias latinoamericanas huyendo de pandillas y amenazas de muerte. Мы представим надломленному миру надежду и примирение в Господе нашем и Спасителе Иисусе Христе. From every nation, every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne, before the throne, and before the Lamb, and before the Lamb, and before the Lamb. Every time I watch that video, it moves me. Um, just the love that God has for us, every tribe, every language, every nation. We'll bow before Him. What an amazing, amazing truth for us today. My name is Harry Ozeric. I am the assistant pastor here at Faith Alliance Church, and I want to welcome all of you for joining us today. I have a few announcements for you. If you haven't heard today, following the service, directly following the service, we have our building edition meeting, and we invite everyone to stay and be a part of that here um, and gain some great insight and information. Um, please stay after the service and come to that um, very important meeting. Also want to remind you that our new church directory is being formed right now, and so if you would, please fill out the insert in your bulletin and put it in the basket on the counter in Brielle's office, 
or in the offering plates in the back. And we would really appreciate that as we want to connect our church family together. I have a few other announcements. As you see up on the screen there, our summer worship camp. We're doing our first ever summer worship camp, July 8th through the 10th. This is for all existing worship team members, worship ministry members. If you're part of our worship ministry, we really want to encourage you to come and be a part of this. And it's also for those that aren't part of our worship ministry yet, but would like to be or curious about it, and would like to learn more about who we are, worship music, worship ministry in general, as well as maybe grow and learn some other skills. So this is for all those that are currently in our worship ministry, as well as those that aren't yet that have thought about or have some talent or skill in singing or an instrument. And just because you haven't seen the instrument up here doesn't mean we don't want it. If you play, I don't know, the saxophone... Anyone see that picture up there? We can find a place for you, all right? So come talk to me, and I'd love to talk with you about that 8th through the 10th of July. No cost to you, and really want to encourage you to come and be a part of that. Susie's one of our worship leaders here, Ben as well, myself, and my wife Tesha, and we all have just been uh, praying over this for quite a while. So encourage you to come and be a part of that. We also have a big event coming up in the park, Veterans Park, uh, July 24th, all right? This is an outreach event as well as we're going to be selling, well, a free will barbecue donation a meal at 5.30 to raise money for the youth for next summer. We're going to life again next summer, and so we're going to be doing a little fundraiser for the youth during this. We're also going to have praise and worship um, and uh, just an awesome time for the entire family, and a cornhole tournament is what we're hoping to organize as well. And so I will say, if you know how to run a cornhole tournament, you should come talk to me. I would love to gain some insight into that. Um, I don't know everything there is to know about cornhole tournaments. So if you know something, come talk to me. I would appreciate any help that you can give. If you'd like to volunteer for that event, you can also come and talk to me. I'd love to plug you in and help with that. The last, uh, second to last announcement I have for you, our baptism service is coming up July 25th. So the Praise and Worship Night in the Park is the 24th. That's a Saturday. Baptism is the following day, the 25th, Sunday. If you haven't been baptized yet and you want to, please come talk to myself or Paul. Our emails are there. We've put this graphic on the email, uh, prayerfac, faithlinesydney.org, as well as on Facebook and Instagram. If you haven't gone and followed those social media uh, platforms, please do so as you can stay up to date on all that is going on here at Faith Alliance Church. And the last announcement I have for you, our Sunrise Women's Clinic baby bottle blessing that we did, that fundraiser. Um, it is done. It's closed. Uh, but one little thing that we can always do that helps them is return any bottles that we have, empty or full. If you have a baby bottle that you took, don't feel bad. Bring that back to them. It helps keep their costs down that they don't have to buy more bottles the next year and so on and so forth. So, if you still have a bottle, please return it, empty or full, and uh, bless the Sunrise Women's Clinic. And with that said, if you would stand with us, please, um, and we're going to pray. Pray over our time this morning and commit it to the Father. Lord, we come before you thankful. Thankful that we can be a part of a community that stretches beyond these walls, to be a part of a community that stretches beyond this nation. And it stretches the entire globe, this body of believers that declare you Lord and Savior of their life. Lord, we thank you that we are never alone or that you never fail or that you continue to chase after us, that you want us or that you're patient with us, that you give us grace. Lord, I want to thank you also for the blessings that people have bestowed on this church, this body, this place of believers that you have called to do an amazing work for this specific time. I want to thank you for those that have given, not only of their time or their talents, but also of their finances. Lord, today I also do want to pray for our men's retreat as they head off to the yak. We pray for safety. We pray for renewal. Pray for refreshment. Pray for an awakening. 
that you would be not only present, not only working and moving, but that the men there would hear from you. That they would have the eyes to see what you are wanting them to do. And Lord, that those men would move in power and in courage, not because of what they have within them, but what you supply by working in and through them. Lord, take captive this time this morning. Bless this body. May we honor and glorify you in all that we do, in all that we say, in all that we think. May we also commit this time to you in praise and in thankfulness and a deep desire to move where you want us to move. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. I'm going <clears> to <throat> say, first of all, welcome. We are so glad that you're here with us this morning. And I'm going to start kind of an old school tradition here. <laughs> Go back to an old tradition. But um, many of you probably learned the Lord's Prayer growing up, maybe. Um, it comes out of Matthew 6. And I wanted us to try to speak that together. If you don't know it, just listen along. I'm going to read it. Um, if you do know it, feel free to pray it along with me. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And we can add, for thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So I want us to just think of that. Um, I mentioned it in the video about God's kingdom coming down to earth. And that is quite something I can't wrap my head around, but I pray for it. Lord, that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. He is able. Amen? Amen. So sing along with us as we remember what he is capable of, what he has done in the past. We're going to remember that through this next song, and we're going to believe in faith for what he is able to do in our lives. Nothing is better than you. 
for your mercy, which you have poured out on us, God. Thank you for coming to seek and save the lost. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross, paying the price for our sin. Thank you, God, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Thank you for the freedom that you bring and the Holy Spirit that you give to us. We praise you, Lord God. We thank you for your generosity of your fellowship. Lord, we come before you. I pray that you would help us to enter in to your presence right now, God, that we would put our minds on you right now, that we would meditate on who you are and your greatness and your holiness and your awesomeness, God, that nothing is too hard for you in our lives, in our struggles, in our burdens that we face. God, we all have brokenness, and we come before you right now with that brokenness. We cast our cares on you, Jesus. We thank you that you are a good shepherd. We praise you, God, that you are the good father. Lord, I thank you and I rejoice in you, God, today. I thank you for your ever-present help in time of trouble. I thank you that you are beyond our limitations. Lord, I pray that you would be manifested in our lives and that you would be just showing your evidence day by day in our walk with you, Lord. Lord, help us to remember who you are.
Lord God, with ever, whatever hard thing that we have in our life right now, increase our faith that you are able to do more than we can ask or imagine. And that you are God on the throne over all. And I thank you, Lord, that you are holy.
In the book of Hebrews, we are told that faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Seventy-two years ago, there was a man by the name of Robert Cutberth, and he was certain of what he did not see, at least not yet. So Robert took a step of faith when he became the first pastor of a new church in Sydney, Montana. And throughout the years, this church would see a lot of change, a lot of growth. In fact, they even built a new building. Yeah, guess where you're seated? You're sitting in that church. Faith Alliance Church was established 72 years ago by a man and a group of people who were willing to take a step of faith, trusting God to provide when they stepped out in faith and in obedience. And in reading through the annual, annual reports for the past 72 years, I noticed that there was a consistent, uh, consistent themes expressed by the 12 pastors that have served here over the years. Number one, it kept coming through over and over again. We want to reach more people in our community for Christ. We will have a desire to have a greater, um, or I'm sorry, to experience revival within the church, that there be growth within. And thirdly then, a desire to have a greater kingdom impact, not only in this community, but beyond. There was also a desire when I read through these reports that we'd evaluate our ministries and be willing then to make the necessary changes to become effective or more effective and accomplish our, our mission. As I read through these, I'm thinking this sounds really similar to what we've been saying, that it is our desire to connect people to God, connect people to one another, and connect people to the world in life-transforming relationships. So maybe the saying that Solomon said so many years ago, the more things change, the more they stay the same. You may or may not be aware that for about 10 years now, we leaders, church body, have been in discussion and planning for in addition to this building and or to construct a new building in our efforts to accomplish these desires, these missions of reaching more people for Christ, seeing revival within, having a greater uh, kingdom impact in this community and beyond. We've been talking about how can we take the next step of faith in either building on or building new. So to that end... I believe it was about a year, year and a half ago, leadership of your church met with a real estate agent who showed us several properties that are for sale in and around Sydney. Several of these locations, to be honest with you, would be ideal locations for a new church, right? We're talking south of town by the town pump. We're talking behind Teal Brothers um, Roofing Yard, north of town by the wrought iron on the northeast side of town, uh, by the Sunrise Housing Development. We even looked right across the street because we knew Chad's Furniture Building was going to be coming up for sale. So we've looked around. We're exploring. In meeting with the real estate agent, we learned that property in the valley here is selling for right about $50,000 an acre. We would ideally, if we could and would, and maybe someday we will, purchase, we'd purchase a minimum of five acres of land, giving us uh, uh, enough room for the building, for open space, for future development, for a parking lot. Five acres, you can do the math, $50,000 an acre, $250,000 just to have a piece of property. We also learned then in talking with the real estate agent that these properties outside the city limits all would require infrastructure to be built when you build your building or facility. I don't know if you know what a whole lot about the infrastructure is. That means whoever would purchase that land would have to pipe in the water, the sewer, the curb, the gutter. You have to bring in the electrical needs. 
And uh, guess what? Pretty expensive, like very expensive. So not only would we have to purchase the land, we'd have to pay for all the infrastructure so that we could then eventually build on that property. So, Chad's Furniture is an ideal location to purchase and or to build on. What we learned in the process of looking at that, and Dennis was very gracious to us, um, being able to let us look through the property, we found that it would be uh, very cost prohibitive for us as a church to make that our next step towards adding on or building. So first we could remodel Chad's furniture and bring it up to code. That would include paying for asbestos removal, installing a sprinkler fire system, suppression system, new restrooms, updating the electrical system, updating the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning units, repairing and installing a new roof, and repairing the water damage that has been done on the roof in the ceiling, removing and replacing uh, a good portion of the flooring, not to mention remodeling so it could be fit uh, for our use for uh, different uses. Cost prohibitive. The other option we looked at was, well, let's just take a wrecking ball to it and then we could either have a parking lot and or we'd have property for building a new building. Again, very, very cost prohibitive because even with the demolition, you still have to have the asbestos removal. You have to have the pay for the demolition. You have to pay for it to haul it to landfill. We're back to an empty lot with a lot of money. So, long story short, the leadership believes that the most cost effective, the best stewardship of our resources, as well as the best next step to increase our ministry effectiveness would be by adding on to our facility. And in this, we have considered several options. What can we do? A couple years ago, we were looking at adding on an entryway, offices, and restrooms. I believe at that time it was a bit of uh, $600,000, and hence we came up with a $300,000 goal to have half in hand to build entryway offices and restroom. That was one option. Second option was to build entryway offices, restroom, add a nursery to it, and then a multi-purpose room, a new kitchen, have that added on but not finish at that time. So finish the entryway, restrooms, offices, nursery, shell in the fellowship hall in the kitchen at a later date, or the third option then, let's build and finish all this. Entryway, restroom, fellowship hall, kitchen, get it done in one, at one time. In January of this year, we received a bid from B&B uh, Construction, roughly 1.2 million, I'm rounding it up, okay? 1.2 million to do the entire thing, to offices, entryway, restrooms, nursery, kitchen, fellowship hall, and do it and be done with it. No uh, finishing up later. $1.2 million for that addition. The leadership is convinced that now is the time to build. The place to build is right where we are on land that we already own. We are aware that faith will be required for this building to become a reality. Some of you are probably asking, well, why would we even build now? Why is this the time to build? I'm going to give you a couple reasons. There's, there's many more, in my opinion. We know, number one, that there are still many people in this community, in this region, who have yet to enter a life-transforming relationship with Jesus Christ. And we as a church family cannot be content knowing that there are people yet to enter into that relationship and say, well, it's good enough. It's good enough for us. It may be good enough for us, but I believe God is calling us to do more than just good enough. He wants us to do our part to step out in faith and at least make an attempt to bring more people into his kingdom. 
We know that there are still many within our church family, including myself and your leaders, who have room to grow and mature in our relationship with Christ. And we know a good way that happens is in our small groups. This Sunday morning is great. It's a good start. Please keep coming to church Sunday morning. You saw the testimonies last week. If not, go online and watch our service from last week. We are seeing lives transformed in our life groups where we meet in a smaller community, where we can pray with each other, where we can study the scripture together, where we can share life together, where we come alongside one another and support and encourage and hold each other accountable. We all have room to grow in that. And we know that there are still many in our community and in our church family that could benefit by making these life-transforming relationships and with a, I'm going to say, a better, bigger facility, we'd be able to increase our capacity to minister to more people more effectively. As you can see by looking around you this morning, we have more than enough room in our sanctuary for people to come to our worship services on Sunday morning. This is not our choke point. This is not where we're like, oh, we're out of room. We, we've gone to two services. That's been helpful. This is not the bottleneck. Our bottleneck is our capacity to minister effectively is being limited by our current building. The image that comes to my mind is that of a growing family, right? Young couple starts out, you get a one, two bedroom apartment. It's great. It's nice. It's adequate. A child comes along, maybe two children, maybe three. Guess what? That one or two bedroom apartment isn't, isn't big enough anymore. You need more room. And when you do get a bigger apartment or a bigger house, everybody appreciates extra space, a place for a growing family. So to give you an idea, this past year, in our ministries, aside from Sunday morning, our Roots ministry, Roots is our elementary age kids. We have that on Sunday morning, we, between the services, Wednesday night. We're averaging 20, I'm sorry, yes, we're averaging 20 kids per week. Same thing, our youth ministry, that includes junior and senior high, the average is 25 kids per week. I might add that roughly a third of those students, elementary and junior and senior high, roughly a third, that's the only time they come to church. They're not from church homes. They're coming because of the ministries that we're offering are meeting a need for them, and we've provided a place for them to come. It's safe where they're learning about God. They're growing in their relationships with each other. They're having a good time, a safe place. This past year, you may or may not be aware that this church hosted the Sydney Youth Center. What started this is a year ago, there was talk of the Sydney school system going to a four-day school week. Okay, what's the concern of the parents? What are my kids going to do on Friday when there isn't any school? Thanks to connections that Pastor Harry has established with our school system, they approached him, asking him, what can we do? What can you do to help us to be able to have a safe place for these kids on Fridays? We chose, or they selected, Friday afternoons, one to four. It's not going to be an all-day thing, but at least a few hours. We are providing a safe place for kids. It is chaperoned. They can have a good time. There are some treats. There's help available if they want to get their homework done. But more than anything else, this church <clears throat> is providing a place for the youth in our community to come and be cared for and be known, the parents can know that it is a safe chaperone place. People that are volunteers, the adult volunteers have gone through the, uh, help me out here, the safe place, child uh, protection stuff, okay? Do you understand 
right now, the community has come to us asking for help, addressing a need in this community. I believe it was last week, Pastor Harry was in communication with some other leaders, and they are hoping and pl making plans to make this y next year youth center even bigger and better. It's a collaborative effort. This church is able to host that, and for that we are very grateful. This church also hosts fifth quarter parties. This is a time for youth in our community to eat. There's plenty of food. They play games. They can just hang out after football games. Harry, is it also basketball games or just football? He's both. Okay, so there are times throughout the fall into the winter, again, where kids can come, a safe place. We have a pretty good setup for them. In addition to this, we have adult life groups that meet. They meet on Sunday morning, they meet on Sunday evening, they meet on Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. With the adult life groups, we're averaging close to 60. I want to, those of you that know me, you know that I'm not really good at math, right? Like, I'm really not good. I did the math on this. Check this out. We are currently averaging more people in our life groups than we are in our Sunday morning worship services. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to help you see Sunday morning sanctuary need is not our biggest need as we look to the future. We'll go to two services, we'll go to three if we have to. We can make more, we can accommodate more here. We are running out of places and spaces for people to connect to each other in life-transforming relationships. For a while, a couple of years ago, we tried to have two uh, life groups in the sanctuary. Guess what happened? It was a mess. You couldn't hear over each other. It's good. There's conversation. There's laughter. It's going on. It was good. We tried to do as best we could with the space that we have. My point is what you see on the screen, our capacity to minister effectively is being limited by our current facility. And I might add, we had a life group meeting, or several of them, over in Chad's Furniture. Thank you, Dennis, for your generosity. He didn't charge us a dime, by the way, to use that facility. That's gone. That building is sold. We no longer have access to that. Some of you might be asking, well, couldn't we continue to make do with what we currently have? Couldn't we? And the short answer is yes, we could continue to make do with what we currently have. But that's exactly what we would be doing. We would be making do with what we'd have. If we continue to make do with what we currently have, we'd be limiting others in this community from the opportunity to get connected to God and to others in life-transforming relationships. Like the relationships, the transformation that you heard about last week in the several testimonies of people's lives that have been and are being impacted by the variety of life groups that we offer. Building the addition will increase our capacity to minister to more people more effectively. And that's just the ministries that we are currently doing. Lord only knows what can take place when we have more room. Seriously, ask the Glendive Alliance Church. A year ago, during the pandemic, they were building, I don't know how many million dollars their expansion was. They added on. And now this fall, they're going to be offering a preschool in their church for their community 
which they couldn't and didn't offer before, which wasn't even on their radar when they were building the addition. God just kind of laid it on their laps. They took another step of faith and started that. You all know um, Stephanie Schultz. She's going to be the head of that. They didn't see that when they built the addition, and now it's an opportunity. And if anybody has any younger kids, guess what one of the biggest needs is in any community? Quality, affordable, daycare, child care, preschool. The Lendive Alliance Church, because of their building, is now able to be a greater blessing to their community. Who knows what God would have in store for us with the addition, with the additional room. This building obviously has served us well for many years, and for that we are more than grateful. We have reached our maximum effectiveness with this building. It is time for us to take a step of faith. It is time for us to trust that God will provide when we step out in obedience to him. We do our part, trusting God to do his part. Again, the book of Hebrews tells us, Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Know that your leaders are inviting you to take a step of faith with us in building an addition to this church, trusting that the Lord will provide above and beyond anything we can imagine. We're asking you to join us in this. And we're asking you to exercise faith. For some of you, it may be faith like you've never exercised before. For others of you, this is like, finally, we're doing this again. I get to step out. Wherever you're at, we're asking you to prayerfully consider stepping out with us to build an addition to this church, not even so much for ourselves, yes, it is that, but for the potential of increasing our effectiveness to minister to more people more effectively. Will you pray with me, please? Father God, we are grateful for all your provision for all these years. Some of us seated here were not even considered when this church was established 72 years ago. Others, I know, have been a vital part of this church for many, many years. We've seen and experienced a lot of change. We've seen you provide over and over and over again. And Lord, I pray that where we lack faith, you will supply. Where we lack, well, yeah, but what about, or what about? God, you would supply above and beyond anything we can ask or imagine. To you be the glory. May your kingdom grow. May we be willing to put ourselves out there, trusting you in faith and obedience for the growth of your kingdom and for the glory of your name in this community and beyond, we ask and pray this in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If you'll stand up and receive the benediction, please, and then in roughly 10, 15 minutes, we will have that meeting, and please you know that you're all welcome to stay and take part in that. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you.